All right, good, good day to you, uh, or uh, good evening, good morning, wherever you're at. Uh, today is uh, September uh, the 12th, Wednesday, uh, and it's 2012, and this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. We have an election this year in the U.S. if you're listening from abroad, and it's on November 6th. And what you might see is maybe a shot heard around the world where, um, you know, we wake up on November 7th and find out there's 50 plus independent third party candidates elected to Congress. Now, wouldn't that be, uh, you, you know, a great surprise um, to, you know, we the people, uh, maybe not to special interest, but we're interviewing independent third party candidates um, that are going to be on the ballots um, that have a, uh, you know, good chance of winning. And, um, and that's if people want to choose, uh, you know, instead of the lesser of two evils, again, um, after again and again, I mean, because if you select the lesser of two evils for too many times, it might as well just equal one really big evil, right? And um, so today we have uh, Brian Irving on the line. He is um, uh, running for the U.S. House in, in uh, District Number 2, and um, that's in North Carolina. He is running against um, Stephen Williams, the Democrats. Uh, and uh, Renee Elmers, which I didn't happen to take the time to look up how she voted on the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. And she did vote A to allow um, indefinite detention. Um, basically, that's like snatch and grab, where they can pick up anyone off from anywhere, the military going into um, you know, U.S. Um, territory and, and, and doing that so without ever being heard from, having a lawyer indefinitely, et cetera. And Brian, um, I just brought up some issues that you might feel differently about them, um, and uh, it's great to talk to you, Brian Irving, um, and uh, it is um, Irving, I-R-V-I-N-G, for the number four Congress, um, dot uh, liberty point dot org, and um, uh, Brian, great to talk to you, and uh, what drove you to run, and, and tell us a little bit about yourself, and, and what drove you this year, 2012? Um, do you think this is a special year, or, or what, what's on your mind today, sir? And thank you for your time today. We appreciate Thomas, it. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, uh, I'll tell you very honestly, um, I have run for office before as a battalion, but what really drove me to run for Congress is I am a retired Air Force, 25 years, I'm proud of my military service, but I am tired and saddened every time I see a young soldier, airman, marine, or sailor coming home from Afghanistan, Iraq, or some other place uh, and seeing his child for the first time. I'm tired of seeing our soldiers, airmen, marines, our military people coming home with limbs blown off, with their minds destroyed. I'm tired of it. Our nation has been at war too long, and I'm running for Congress because I want to stop all war and bring back the Constitution. Yeah, I'm sick and tired really of being tired. sick and tired, too. I mean, I, I really am. That's why we're doing these interviews and uh, trying to get the word out um, to, to imagine, to not be so short-sighted as to think, you know, all we can choose from is dumb and dumber. Um, you, you know, the dinocrats who are and the redunlicans, the redunlicants. And uh, so, um, yeah, well, we appreciate you running. You're giving people an opportunity to choose someone who um, just said what you just said, uh, shows that your heart's in the right place. And um, and so well, what, do you, what do you think, I mean, what are about the legalities? Like, you're running on the Libertarian Party. Um, I don't think there's anyone that's a Green Party person in your race. So, I mean, you're really the only alternate choice. And I think no matter what party you normally belong to i mean if, if you just want america back um on the big issues i mean i think you would be the candidate to choose even if they're disgruntled republican or democrat absolutely that's, that's exactly the tact i'm taking my 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 platform my theme for my campaign is stop all war and bring back the constitution and when, naturally I, I when i talk about war i talk about our interventionist foreign policy in afghanistan and you know wherever else the president on his own initiative, on his own whim, decides to send our troops. But I'm also talking about the wars that are being waged on the American taxpayer, on American entrepreneurs, on alternative lifestyles, the war on drugs. You know, we have a war on everything. Every every Democratic and Republican politician uses this whole idea of war. Yeah, let's have a war on war. Maybe we'll have, like, the ultimate war then, you know? Well, I'll be honest with you. I started this campaign... Uh, 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 with Lee Wrights, who was seeking the Libertarian presidential nomination, and his theme was stop all war. Uh, 
uh, he, he reiterated throughout his uh, effort to get the nomination that I am not at war, and I, 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 I follow my brother's uh, example to say I am not at war. We need to be at peace. Yeah, if all war does is breed more war yeah. and, and more death and more destruction. War is destruction. Instead of construction. It's destruction yeah. instead of construction. I mean, you know, if, if, if any... Cutting back military spending, is that going to leave us vulnerable, uh, Brian, or will that actually make us stronger? And I guess I do mean a lot stronger. I mean, are we a republic or are we an empire? Right. We, we're supposed to be a republic. Um, in fact, I'm reading, uh, I'm just, I'm reading a book that's talking about the last days of the American, re the American Republic. Uh, we're, we're going the way of Rome, but you know, the, 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 the right now, all the, uh, the. Uh, the Republican and Democratic candidates are talking about is the economy and jobs. Uh, you know, of course, they're totally ignoring the fact that the President of the United States has no ability to create any jobs except his own. You know, we're sixteen trillion dollars in debt because of the wars that we're involved in, because of the fact that our uh, government is spending. Oh, trillions! Money and and have. and the, the F, I mean, the Pentagon needs to be audited. Uh, they, that they don't. There's like two or three trillion dollars. They don't even know what happened to it. So I mean, that's just. You know, oh, the yeah, stuff exactly. that's on the books. We're not talking about the stuff that's not on the books. You know, we're spending, our, our defense budget is like four or five times the, the uh, combined totals of all the, other, of the all the other nations in the world. We can, we can cut our, our budget, our defense budget dramatically. We can bring our troops home now and still protect our country. And in fact, we can do a better job of protecting the United States from attacks if we have our troops stationed at home. Yeah, and, and definitely exactly, we could do a better exactly. job, and, and we could have more trade. It, it's, it did, it did, I mean, the real question is, people have to ask themselves, I mean, it, in order to justify 900 bases in over 130 countries spending trillions among trillions among trillions, um, is, um, I, I mean, first, how can we defend ourselves if we can't even defend ourselves against military contractors? And then second, um, I, I mean, are we an empire or a republic? I, I mean, and you can still be a republic. I mean, if any country really, you know, attacked us, I mean, we would scoop them up like a shovel and throw them off this planet Earth. I mean, well, that's exactly, so uh, yeah, that, that's they'd be exactly. Floating in I, space. You know, my my campaign is aimed at both uh, both the Tea Party people and the Occupy people because I think they're both they're both. Uh, they don't know it, but they're both opposing. Well, here, here's the thing, Brian, real quick. Just uh, occupy Congress and then throw these right. people in Congress out like they were barrels of tea at the Boston Harbor. That's exactly. what I'd say. Right. You know, as uh, in the military, we had uh, uh, one of the worst things, uh, one of the worst uh, omissions you could commit was dereliction of duty. And my, my attitude is that Congress as a body has been derelict in its duty to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Well, what about that NDAA? I mean, uh, I mean, the military even said, well, that was, that passed December 31st, New Year's Eve. I mean, I guess you call that the eve of destruction because that really brought in um, lawlessness. I mean, they're really the anarchists that are in charge. They're the ones who don't want any rules. Um, they want the might makes rights um, policy. And, uh, and you know, if there's no habeas corpus, if there's no recognizing the Constitution, that really is anarchy. I mean, uh, we have anarchists in government right now, I would argue, because they want to be able to kill people and snatch them up without any due process. Isn't, I mean, to me, that's well, anarchy. You know, basically, you know, basically con Congress is totally ignoring their, their duty and responsibility, and uh, the the incumbent uh, did did actually vote for NDAA, and she also it, voted to raise the debt ceiling, which is another way they have of just uh, uh, running a government through smoke and mirrors. Yeah, and so. do you think, I mean, what's going to change them? Do you think all of a sudden they're going to wake up with a good heart or something? I mean, it's possible, but, I mean, it hasn't happened for, I mean, this has just been a continuation since, um, you know, uh, since probably the, Clinton, since probably, you know, Ronald Reagan, I mean, or Jimmy Carter or, or so, somewhere well, I there. Think, you know, I think, the, uh, I think the Ron Paul movement. Or the, Richard uh, the Nixon. Liberty, the Liberty Movement. Um, and I think there's going to be a, 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 a gradual awakening. I was somewhat uh, encouraged by uh, the Ron Paul people, at least in North Carolina. I went to a meeting recently, and they, they're still fired up about, um, about what they want to promote. Uh, they, they haven't been... They're, they're bloody but unbowed, uh, even though they were completely um, uh, 
disrespected by the Republican oh, you, you, Party. Oh, they, they, they're not getting mainstream media, but if anyone looks on YouTube, the thousands of views, the thousands of people would show up for Ron Paul. I mean, it was like a, exactly. it was yeah. like Warren Harding when he would have like 10,000 people at his house. I mean, this was like, you, you know, people all across the country from like California to Kansas to Pennsylvania and New York and, and every place. And um, I mean, it was... Uh, you know, it's it a great thing to see. I mean, this like little tour he did around the country, and um, and people are waking up. I mean, if I was running third party or independence, and I had to pick like a year, I mean, this would be you know, if I had the magic power to pick any year and time, this would have to be one of the best years because Congress has a 10% approval rating right now. I mean, the 10% like we approve of you, 10%. Um, yeah, like that's, like yeah like. And this is how much I like you. It's it's ten percent, and most people identify themselves as independent uh, instead of Republicans or Democrats. Even yeah, and even people that 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 register in in, the, in one of the two power parties, they even though they're registered, they do that for because their daddy was registered that way. Right, right. They don't I, even really I, like him. Well, I mean, I yeah. used the analogy uh, recently that somebody talked to me about the part, political parties being like a team. It's like if you live in Chicago, you got to root for either the White Sox or the Cubs, yeah. um, regardless. Of I don't, business. though. You know what? I used to like the Steelers, and they weren't even in my state. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Exactly. You need you need people that live in you know that live in Atlanta, Georgia, and root for the you know the the the, uh, the San Francisco Giants. You know that kind of stuff. You need people that 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 that'll go out of the out of their box, out of their safety net out of their little box and, and vote. And I think that's what's happening. It's, it's a gradual thing. I'm old enough to have to, to have been through several election cycles, and it, I, I get tired of um, both Republicans and Democrats making it sound like, you know, this is going to be Armageddon if um, if their candidate doesn't get elected or if the other guy gets elected. Oh, they're just playing people like a fiddle. I mean, it's so sad to see it. it it's, it's their... Um they're they're cheaters. They're liars. They're uh, you know they're they're spending. That's part of the yeah. that, that's part of that mentality. They use the that, the when I say war, they use war analogy because in war you know you either win or you lose. Oh, they're so, making decisions about life and death as if like um you, you know people make decisions about ants you know and right. uh, or a lot of people do I guess and 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 they're I've. I'd call them psychic vampires. I mean, they're just draining, you know, they, they get people aroused and, and, and all, like, uh, piped up, and and, um, and then they, they just deliver the big disappointment, and people are just continuously, like, apologists. Um, but you're right, right, It's that's just what you hear on the mainstream media, which also has a 17% approval rating. I mean, this couldn't be a better year. Now, what about issues? So war is one, and that also has, a, you said, like, as you said, massively to do with the budget. What about the... Um, uh, well, 50% of the people have approved to um, uh, using drugs, so let's lock half the country up and, and put them in private prisons. Exactly. What do you say? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. isn't that what you're for? Or? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would definitely, uh, you know, stop, you know, end the war on drugs uh, because it's really a war on the American people. Yeah. Uh, war on our civil liberties, and that's what that's why I say, you know, stop all war and big. I mean, think of the families that have been broken up because of that, of people who have committed, um, according to the state, um, crimes that are victimless, and um, I, I, it, victimless crimes. Think of like you know, kids without their parents, um, and uh, things like that. W husbands and wives without the other partner, and going to jail for something that. Many of our politicians admitted doing, and then they just kind of smirk about it because it makes them seem more relatable to the public at the same time. They don't have any conscience whatsoever, no shame. Right. And, These people wouldn't care if they were elected by 1%. That's why we need to do more than protesting. We need to vote in people are going to make a difference. They wouldn't care if they got elected by 1% or not. They would take that as a victory. Well, what happens is they. Uh, yeah, I mean, with a one percent turnout, you know. Right. Yeah. They ignore. Well, that's part of the problem. You know, you vote a turnout. I think a lot of people don't vote because they're, they're disillusioned with the system. But again, my appeal as a libertarian. Uh, one of the reasons I enjoy being a libertarian, particularly running for office, is I can appeal to people who consider themselves conservatives as much as I can appeal to people who consider themselves liberals. It depends on the issue. Yeah, I think you're better on the budget, okay, number one. Um, you're better on um, the question of are we a republic or, um, uh, you know, an empire. I mean, you do have 
good military service there, 25 years in the Air Force, um, and, uh, and you're sensible about drug policy. I mean, it's costing us um, a lot, and plus it's also, I would say, cruel and unusual punishment. Now, if people, if there was a victim in the crime, of course, that they would still need to serve the time, but if there were no victims, that's all we're talking about. I, I mean, oh, it's, exactly. I mean, yeah. if you, I, you know, drug, the, the drug problem is more of a, um, a, a health problem than is anything else. If somebody gets addicted to a drug, then there needs to be there needs to be uh, uh, a way to uh, it's education, uh, yeah, which is health, I guess. But you treat it as a as a as a as a health issue. And actually, there's a lot of people that have been really helped by it. I mean, a lot of people that are dying. There's people that have been put in jail because I mean that that are over 70 years old you know dying from cancer you know t right, taking exactly. pot I mean and then just dragged out of their house like you know uh, just doors knocked down and stuff like that I mean that's happening in what we call you know they hate us because our freedoms you know right. yeah that's yeah uh, but uh, and the other you know the other the, the other issues uh, of course again the economy is what the what the mainstream politicians are talking about but I try to bring everything back to the fact that the reason our economy is in a tank is because our government is is over overreaching on in everything. Uh, it's trying to be the the uh, the. the they're picking winners and losers. They're picking, yeah, they're rewarding losers with bailouts, people that make decisions that make yeah. companies go bankrupt at the same time. Imagine if, like, you, you, you and, and, and you, like, you own it, like, let's say somebody owned a tackle shop and their next-door neighbor owned a tackle shop and their next-door neighbor went out of business. And then so what the government does is come in and say, all right, you with a successful tackle shop, give me half of your – or a quarter of your income, and I'm going to give it to that other company so they can stay in business. That's yeah. literally what they're doing with banks, I mean, because a lot of mid- and small-sized banks could have bought up those big banks and taken over those mortgages and things like that. Well, again, and the businesses really should have been allowed to um, to go out of business so they could restructure. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I, doubt that, I doubt that people would have been put out of work, because you notice with the uh, a lot of these. Uh, I mean, progressives should agree with that because they they're all into trust busting. So this is the free market way of trust busting. Um, it, it's it's just as much trust busting as Teddy Roosevelt ever did. You know, probably even better. You know, so. And uh, okay, what else? <laughs> what else well, we I mean, it's, it's it's we could. I mean, I think everyone, would, the majority of the public. People. We're against the bailouts, and the, I guess the main point is most people know this, um, you, you know, but yet it's, they still pass. That's the main thing. Well, I mean, the thing is that, you know, it, it doesn't, uh, we, we've gotten into this situation uh, through Democratic and Republican misrule, um, demo, Demopublicans or Republicrats, whatever you want to call it. You know, uh, one, of the, one of the quotes I like to use and, and Lee like to use a lot was from Pat Buchanan. He told talked about the Democratic and Republican parties being two birds, two wings of the same bird of prey, um, and that's exactly what they are. Uh, they're only, uh, they, they have to use negative advertising because they have no difference between them. And so I think we need to get uh, uh, libertarians and, and greens and constitutionalists and all these other so-called third parties uh, need to really think about organizing. One of the things we do here in North Carolina is we have a the Libertarian Party has a pretty good working relationship with the Green Party on the issue of ballot access because, you know, the status parties want to want to keep both of us off the ballot. So Yeah, they need, need to endorse you because issues. they don't have another Green Party candidate running in your district, do they? No, they don't, no. Yeah, and the uh, from my understanding, the, the from my reading of what the Democratic candidate is espousing, he's pretty much a, a conservative, quote-unquote, whatever the heck that means. So, um, you know, I'm running, um, you know, against... Two, two people uh, that are basically going to say the same thing. So, um, Yeah, we have to think more. I, I mean, just a vote for you will help, will be a vote for them getting on the ballots, I, I mean, in the future. And I've seen a lot of fusion candidates, like um, in Texas, the guy running for Senate there has a lot of support from the Green Party. In um, Vermont, I mean, Delaware, there's a person who is running Green Party, and he's actually endorsed by the Libertarian Party in Delaware. And um, so it definitely can happen. I think this is about a fusion um, cycle because there are so many big issues. I mean, it would be nice if we were in a situation where we could actually 
actually debate and have honest conversations about education and health care. But, but right now, I mean, war and peace and civil liberties, I mean, real civil liberties about cruel and unusual punishment and, um, and your, 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 you know, God-given natural rights and, well, uh, the most, the, are, are the at stake. The most disappointing thing I see in this election cycle is that the people on the left are not more up in arms about the, uh, the, the uh, erosion of civil liberties um, you know, the president uh, totally dis disregarding um, people's rights. Uh, well, maybe they're scared they'll be indefinitely detained or something. I know well, a lot of media are I mean, scared about that um, because they, yeah. they, 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 they said there's less, you know, they're getting less information to, to have news reports and stuff. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't stand up for Julian Assange because they basically used a lot of the same information that was in his stories. Um, and yeah, and it's inter it's interesting that uh, uh, the private is in jail. Bradley is in jail for that WikiLeaks thing. Yet the the Navy, the former Navy SEAL who just wrote a book, is still walking around free. So it's kind of interesting to see how that's going to particularly turn out. But well, I think um, our intelligence actually would be stronger um, having kind of an like an open source type of thing where we can, because that way, there. I'm not saying everyone in this country is a genius, but there are a lot of smart people out there. And if we had like, could have a national debate, any flaws that we would have, we would get the best ideas coming in all the time. And, and I don't think there's anything scarier for what any of our potential enemies to um, see like how we are able to admit our flaws and then quickly recoup. I mean, we would be like, you know, like this beast that every time you slash it, just all of a sudden like heals like superhumanly quick. I mean, that's what the strength is of an open and free society, you know? Right, and, and, and we've forgotten that. We have nothing to fear from, ex from the free exchange of ideas. And when we start worrying about what people are saying, uh, that we start losing our freedom. Um, the strength of America is the fact that we can accept criticism and discussion. Um, I remember being in overseas countries and, uh, you know, the uh, people listening to us talking about American politics and they were kind of amazed that we could do that so openly and freely, but uh, that's, that's just the way it is. That's what, that's what makes America strong. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the wave. That, I mean, that's it's just that's the wave of the future. I mean, even though, like, we might not judge a man completely by his character now just because we might not um, be completely open and honest and free um, ourselves just because we are human and make mistakes doesn't mean we can't um, every day try to be better and uh, you know t and work towards that and I mean um, I, I mean I think like the FBI or CIA motto is like um, you know something about integrity and, and, and excellence and, and virtue or something like that and, and, and you know those aren't those let's not change what those meanings of those words mean I mean it really is intelligence to put the minds together and let everyone brainstorm and um, and, and, and speak it out um, and, uh, and and work through things um, and uh, that's where the best ideas come from and, and, and it might you know show some flaws here and there but they'll be healed so much quicker uh, than if they were hidden and and how can make people make a fully informed decision I mean what's the use of voting if, if you don't even know what you're voting about um, if you don't even know all the facts I mean uh, we, we can't exactly. you know okay yeah. Yeah, we can't prosecute someone if, if, you know, there's not enough evidence. So how can we, you know, know, know what's going on if we don't know all the facts? And um, so more information is, uh, you know, that's what our founders hoped for, that we would there there be a fully informed public. And um, so tell us about, you know, the second district of uh, North Carolina a little bit. What's some of the, you know, cool places there? And uh, Well, it's, it's, it's one of those gerrymandered districts. Um, uh, it is actually almost split in half by District 4, um, and uh, it um, is largely a rural area, uh, although I live in one of the major, I live in the, the town of Cary, which is just tucked under Raleigh, which is the state capital, so it's one of the largest uh, urban areas in the state, but I only have a portion of that, so I would say most of my district is rural. It does include the uh, um, city of Fayetteville, um, where I used to live, which is a military town. Um, so it, it's really, again, it's, it's, it's your typical gerrymandered district. Uh, 
almost evenly split between registered Democrats and registered Republicans, but with a significant number of unaffiliated voters, and that, that's what we call independents in North Carolina. Uh, and curiously enough, uh, as in many parts of the nation, the, the fastest growing uh, body of voters are unaffiliated or independent voters, which tells you that the two power, the two party system is uh, maybe not long for this world. Maybe eventually it'll be replaced with a, t a three or four party system. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe you know the four parties won't even be there. Are those two, um, and uh, um, it, you know well, they, a, they might out. It's a free market. Maybe we should you know choose something else instead of having like a duopoly. Right. Well, it's one of the one of the uh, one of the lies that the Democrats and Republicans like to perpetrate on people is saying that, that we live, we have a two party system, and that's not. Look at American history. You always had two major parties, but there's been always a third or a fourth party that's been that's played a significant role in in our in our history and in our politics. Uh, for, as a matter of fact, that the, the current two major parties actually started out as as third party, as minor parties, like the Republicans. During the uh, during the Civil War era, so um, that's you know I think that's part of the education process. But I always like to tell people um, that when they when they're concerned about voting for the lesser of two evils, I, I uh, recently started telling them, Are you really voting for the lesser of two evils, or are you voting for the better of two liars? Um, you recognize that the two parties are the two major parties are corrupt. They're controlled by the same vested interests, special interest groups, uh, pretty much, and yet you're going to pick between them. That's not, you know, that's not a, that's really not realistic. If you really want to vote your conscience, then either vote for a third party, if there's one on the ballot, write in the name, or don't vote at all, and send a message to those two parties that you want something different. That's the only way we're going to change the system. Well, I think voting for you would be the logical, the, the, I mean, if people are, I mean, we are, whether, I mean, some, you know, we're not in a utopia yet, um, and, and we're probably ways away. I, I mean, so we, we are in a society where, you know, people have come together and agreed to a constitution, and, and one way we can change things is by elections, and, um, now, I, the, the, you know, there's an emergency break in case things get really bad that, um, you, you know, that our founders um, wisely put in. It's called the House of Representatives. They have two-year terms. Um, if any time we need to pull that emergency break, we can. And there are people in 70% of all the districts, approximately, um, that do have alternate candidates that would take their oath to the Constitution s sincerely and, um, and, and would uphold their oath. So I don't, you know, it, it's just um, whether we're all on the same page or, or not and just letting people know this is an idea that can happen. It's an idea whose time has come. I mean, I'm just talking about changing the House and the Senate. I mean, I'll leave the presidential politics for others, even though, you know, there are alternates, good alternates there. I mean, better alternates than we've had in a long time, actually. And um, but, uh, you know, so what are some of your favorite um you know, figures, um, people, um, whether in history or nowadays, and, and why, sir? Oh, I don't have, uh, well, or I... Answer that any way you like, you know, yeah, of course. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson, as far as historical figures, although, you know, he, I, I don't, when I look at historical figures, I, I, I look at them as human beings who had, you know, good points and bad points, but for, as a libertarian, of course, I look at Thomas Jefferson as uh, uh, one of the, one of our, uh, Sort of a hero, so if you they want don't to have to be that. favorites. They can be just you yeah. know interesting to you. Yeah. James and Madison. I well, and Jefferson is interesting because of the fact that he was really uh, a well-educated person in a lot of different areas. He was a farmer and a scientist and a, a writer and, that, and you know a political theorist and that kind of thing. Uh, James and Madison, of course. Uh, modern history. When I was a when I was a kid, uh, grew up listening to Barry Goldwater. Um, interesting that uh, some of the same things that uh, the Republican establishment did to Barry Goldwater, they're doing to the Ron Paul people. Um, sometimes history does repeat itself. Oh yeah. Um, but you know those those two individuals uh, are. Come it to definitely, mind. well, definitely big impacting people in in history. And Thomas Jefferson, of course, one of the founding fathers, and. Um, and uh, and so, um, what about um, because I there's. Uh, I, I don't think this. Well, I'll just ask you. What What's your stance on ab abortion, pro-life, pro-choice? Um, where do you stand there, sir? 
Well, that's an interesting thing. That was one of the one of the areas that kind of uh, kept me from formally joining the Libertarian Party because I considered myself pro-life. But I think the issue with with abortion is that um, I don't I don't want to be in a position of forcing another human being to come to my point of view. I happen to believe that it's not a question of whether life begins at conception or not. I believe life is a, a seamless garment, if you will. It, there is no beginning and no end. And that the unborn child does have, uh, it should be treated uh, as a, uh, should be given certain consideration, certain, I don't want to use the term rights, but um, I, I think I would try to convince someone uh, not to have an abortion, regardless of the circumstances. But on the other hand, I'm not about to use the force of law, uh, basically force, I'm not about to use guns to force a woman to have to go a child in a back street somewhere or whatever. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to do that. So I, I believe it's an issue that needs to be resolved by uh, individuals and... And debates. More moral persuasion of a social thing, yeah. Right. I certainly don't, you know, I tell people I'm running for Congress. But you don't, you don't approve, like, tax Congress. dollars going to it. Though, right. So. It, well, there's nothing in the U.S. Constitution that would give me the authority to have anything at all to say about the issue. Uh, and, yes, and I agree uh, uh, that nor should I force other people to use tax money to, to, uh, to fund abortion. So Yeah, I think, I think I, that's where I stand, too. I mean, personally, in this time of age, unless if we get some other kind of enlightenment about the issue, but at this point, I mean, I would have to agree. I definitely don't think tax dollars should go to it because there are many people um, are definitely opposed to tax dollars going to that, and you could argue many people are also opposed to it going to war and stuff like that, which we can make a change. I mean, this is the way we hold people accountable as elections. And then... Well, the, I mean, but the, the difference being that, that the Constitution does allow for the funding of the military, where it does not allow for the fund. You know, it, the Constitution doesn't say anything about health care, doesn't say anything about education. Yeah, no, I understand. I know that's a good point. And at the, at the same time, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to get in, in the, someone's way if, if, you know, it could be a very, or having someone go in a back alley or using, you know, guns, like you said, with the government. Um, right. And, uh, and, and you know, and it, it could be certain situations like rape or whatever, too. I mean, I definitely think, to me, in that situation, I mean, you know, definitely with air. Um, but... It, it's it's but you know so there is um, a lot to discuss on that and, and um, you know so um, but no, it's, it's it's a it's an individual moral decision that somebody has to make yeah and the state should have nothing to do with it yeah. uh, the same way that the state should have nothing to do with determining who can or cannot marry um, there's, there's nothing right. in the um, uh, the Constitution. That's yeah, right. why not just get rid of marriage, like Ron Paul said, marriage licenses altogether. If you want to be married, just consider yourself married. You can do it through the church or whatever well, organization you you know, want. I tell, I tell uh, my fellow Christians that, you know, Jesus, uh, Joseph and Mary didn't have a marriage license. Right, right. <laughs> um, that's a great you know, point. Uh, 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 Martha Washington and George Washington didn't have a marriage license, you know. Uh, there's some parts of history that we I mean, don't really want to talk about. Yeah, you can still have legal contracts if that's what you want to have. I mean, geez, I mean, but... Um, well, that's it, the role of government. The role of government would be to 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 uh, enforce a contract if one existed, but as far as who that contract was between, that would be up to the parties. Right, right. No, I totally agree. I mean, to me, that's a new concept that, that really, I, the first time I heard that was Ron Paul, and I think that makes a lot of sense, and... Um, and and so uh, if Gary Johnson became president, he's going to try to push the fair tax. I mean, do you think you would? Um, and, and that means getting rid of the income tax, not like a 999 where you have a couple different versions of a tax, just one. Um, would do you think you would support that if that was you know had a well, chance I, as, of passing? As I mentioned earlier, I was working for the other guy who was seeking a libertarian nomination, but and I am very impressed with Governor Johnson. I think he's a tremendous candidate. Uh, he has a lot of good ideas. Um, I think he'll be an outstanding president. Uh, I disagree with him, however, on the fair tax. I would want to repeal the income tax and replace it with absolutely nothing. Um, the problem with the federal government is that it's taking in, it's, it's spending too much money. So to, to, say, to say that there is a, a tax to replace the income tax doesn't really address the, the, the root of the, of the problem, which is a, a out-of-control spending. 
So I, I, I would part ways with the governor on that issue. Well, actually, Although, I mean, Ron Paul made a good point in 2008 that you could totally get rid of the income tax. And at that time, this was in 2008, you would still have enough income that equaled to like about 70% of the government. So it, it's, it's not exactly. like we couldn't. I mean, that, to me, that's the strongest point because a lot right. of people don't realize that. Um, I think that's the strongest argument for a lot of people. And I don't think there's anything wrong with people getting together through government to form um, things like a public option. But I think there's two things that would have to make it okay for a libertarian. One is that it's completely voluntary. Um, I mean, completely voluntary, no mandate whatsoever. Number two is that it pays for itself. So if you could have those two factors, maybe people could have a public option where they save on overhead, where they can mass buy in bulk, where they could um, save on advertising costs, where they could have accountability through elected officials. I, I wouldn't have any problem with that whatsoever, and I think it probably could work. And, and you know, maybe the FDA, instead of, um, you know, being, you know, a revolving door of business insiders, I mean, maybe it could be something like a consumer report, like where businesses that want to use FDA because and say like you know they would pay a fee however it costs to run it to have people inspect it and um and then that way they could at the, they could only advertise that it's fda That's inspected good. with that now if you didn't want to run have that on you won't, wouldn't have to you could use a private organization but you know what I, I think there there's i would probably at least in the meantime still buy food that was so i think um i, I wouldn't buy one that wasn't i mean personally so i think it could pay for itself and there are things that could people get together but um, but but they wouldn't have to be forced to. I mean, I personally wouldn't buy something that, that didn't have it. But that doesn't mean. Well, yeah, yeah. But I believe that yeah. there's revenue streams out there, as as the politicians say, that would that could fund the federal government if you reduce the federal government to its constitutionally. Yeah, and uh, and really, that's if we can't cut it like just you know 30 percent having a well nowadays it's much more than that but when it was in 2008 he was talking he said it could cut back to like i think it was like 2002 spending levels without any income tax whatsoever i mean that that point needs to be driven home over and over again because that that's you know they're claiming that you know libertarians are anarchists and, and things like that that's they're the anarchists because they're the ones who are, you know, acting like they're above the law. Um, well, yeah. actually, yeah, you know, that's good. That's a, that's a good point. They are the anarchists because they're the ones that that don't let, let any of the rules. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they don't abide by any of the rules. They just make them up as they go along. So that's a good point. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a. I don't like to hyphenate my libertarianism, but um, I'm more of a. I, I more tend towards being practical and, you know, believing in the, the Constitution is not a perfect document. But it's the best thing we got. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm practical, too. I mean, even Ron Paul was. I mean, if you looked at his budget, he actually helped preserve Social Security more than Mitt Romney and Obama did. I mean, so, it, but no one ever paid attention to that aspect of it. I mean, right. I, you know, no one ever pays. So that's the truth, though. I mean, he actually, ironically, the libertarian would have helped preserve Social Security more than the Democrat exactly, or the Republican. Exactly right. Yeah, right. Right. And, and and Governor Johnson, I mean, he's been there, done that. He has more administrative experience as a oh, governor. A two-time compared to a one-time. Any of the people running for president. Yeah. No, he was a two-time elected governor in New Mexico, which is right. more than Mitt Romney's one term. I mean, you could argue he was more successful in business too. I think um, by building it from the ground up and. Um, and uh, so he's, yeah, I mean, and same with right. you. And, um, well, it, it, Brian, I do thank you for your time here. Is there anything I forgot that you'd like to say in these closing moments? Oh, no, we moments? covered so many things. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. Oh, yeah, I would say uh, I, I really enjoyed the time, and I, I would tell people out there that are, that are from North Carolina, they're listening in the district, to, to vote for Brian Irving for Congress. Uh, but the uh, easiest way to get to my website is just remember Liberty Point. LibertyPoint.org is, is the best way to get to the website. Um, and uh, fire me off an email, and I'll answer any questions you may throw at me. Yeah, and um, his email is brian at LibertyPoint.org. The, the web address is Irving4, the number 4, Congress, dot Liberty Point dot org and um and so yeah it's been a pleasure brian i'll say goodbye to you right after this interview real quick and um i do appreciate your time today i mean even if you're not in north carolina um i mean you might not have someone in your district i mean you're a green party person you're a republican democrat i mean i'm not saying leave the republican or democrat party but you, you know you still want to have an influence there but what i'm saying is this election 2012 
let's send someone amongst ourselves there and and let's send brian to congress i think he deserves it. i think um we deserve it it's it's for us and so brian thank you so much and uh have a good one and we'll uh you know keep a watch on your campaign sir and i'll say goodbye to you real quick here thanks